Hey, how you doing? Well, I decided that um, we're gonna do um, we're gonna split split these uh, episodes up into uh, pretty much rounds. So this round, if you know movement, you, you may want to skip to like the second or or, or third uh, video that's gonna come out for this. Uh, today we're gonna do the first round maybe the second depending on things but it'll also kinda help explain a few things as we go through the game is split up into a a bunch of different phases I'm just gonna kinda keep this focused on here while I explain them one is the command phase if you see these dials here these are already preset so I kinda started a little bit ahead of time and you start off with speed one. So speed one here would just be a move on the dial, okay? Um, uh, I mean on the ruler. And I'll show you how to, how to move. But these um, command things have different types of uh, things, like uh, it has navigate, squadron, you can activate a number of squadrons before, uh, before you do your ships, a repair, and concentrate fire. Yeah, for the bigger ships, you have a three command, and we'll take a look at that card right there. Okay, a three command. That means that you have to preset for each round. So at the end of the uh, at the start of the command phase, we'll turn this one over. We'll use it for the round, and then reset it and put it on the bottom and then the next one so it won't be able to work its way up for three rounds so you have to plan ahead with the bigger ships on the on the rebel side as you can see this one has a the frigate has a command of two and the corvette if we can get her in there has a command one so you only have to you set that dial every single time and you can move which means it has more maneuverability and it's able to shift gears a lot quicker and do certain things but of course it doesn't have the armor or the firepower as our friend over there the victory class now normally you would play with some commanders and stuff like that but just to keep this first one easy i just am going to go head on and you know let's just you know fight it out so with that said let's kinda get started now with initiative depending on the scenario and forgive me because I'm moving some tokens out of the way initiative is this dial here and there's a reason why it's colored on each side and I'll explain it during the round um, Whoever gets initiative has initiative for the game. So we're going to have some fun and we're just going to give, because the rebels are the rebels, we're going to give them initiative for the game. Now they get to move their ships first. So what moves first is we do the command phase. We've already done the command phase, so that's all set. okay? And the speed is already pre-locked at 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn over our command tokens for each ship. And for the nebula, we have chosen, okay, navigate. Now what navigate does is it allows you to move up on your speed chart by one. So what we can do is we set and make sure that we know forgive me because I'm doing this with one hand I'm gonna buy one of those GoPros I am I was looking at one this weekend for $129 and it approved the quality of my videos and might even actually make people watch this channel not that I worry about that kind of stuff so now it's up to two so at two you're allowed to make oops let's get that in there two clicks so let's take a look at this. So at the one marker, okay, we can make oh, the one marker, we can click once either way. 
Okay, and then at the two marker, we can click. So what happens is, how you measure is you would take and fit that into the groove there. And then you would move your ship to where the two is and fit it in into the groove. Now you can do it from either side, as you can see. You know, as long as you can fit it in, but of course, uh, whoops, you would crank it the other way. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get that guy back there, and what we're going to do is we're going to do our our official move here. So that's that's pretty much how you move. And what we're going to do is we're going to move the ship at speed two. Um, we're actually going to click one here. And I think the way we're going to do this is we're going to put the groove here. And we're going to go up to two, which is right there. It's always from the front end of the ship. Make sure it fits in the groove there. And we're going to start heading for that big boy. So that's the movement for that. Now, what happens is, the way, the way it goes, movement with the big ships is always last. Because uh, what you do with the ship face is you reveal your com command dial. Uh, let me make sure that you guys can see something. You reveal your command dial. Then you do attacks. You can perform up to two attacks from different hull zones. And our hull zones, that's a hull zone, and that's a hull zone. Okay? And you measure from the dot to see the other dot. Okay? If you can do that, then you have line of sight, and you can fire, and as long as it's within the, this arc. Okay? So... If you wanted to fire, you can fire from this arc once, and then you would have to be able to fire from these two arcs to get a second fire. But you always fire first, and since you know we're way out of range, and what we do is, I think everybody recognizes this, this is kind of just like the, uh, the X-Wing version of it. Okay, that is your distance. And as you can see, we're way out of distance, and they're way out of distance. So that's why we didn't even go to the attack phase first. But I wanted to make sure that we uh, talked about it. So we executed the maneuver for the frigate. And now I've decided also to do a navigate. So we can bring this guy, and you can see his speed at 2, which we're going to move him up to two, he gets to go one, and then he can go two. I mean, uh, uh, you, you can click it once, but in the second one, you can click, you can actually click it twice. So, this ship has a lot more flexibility, because if you start clicking this, like one, two, and then you move this, two, I mean, you could see... You can pretty much make a pretty pretty good turn there. But we're not going to do that. Because our main objective is just to take out our buddy there. So all we're going to do is on the second one, we're just going to, we're going to click it once. Because we don't want to ram into each other. And we do want to have some distance there. Oops. I'm trying to do this. Okay. Sorry about that. So we're going to take, and as you can see from the front edge, and it fits perfectly in, and there you go. There's our maneuver for our big ships. Now, once our, our big ships are done, then his big ships get to go. And what we did is, let's turn this over, 
he did a maneuver too. But you can see he can only go up to two. Okay? And he gets one click. So he really doesn't get too much to do. So we're going to get the ruler here. We are just going to go straight ahead because we want to get this battle going pretty, pretty quick. So we're going to take from the front edge again up to two, which is the front edge there, as you can see, and we're going to pull that away. And as you can see, nobody can shoot. And that is the end of the ship phase. Okay. So we did all our maneuvers. We couldn't, we, we tried our attack. There was nothing that we could do as far as attack is concerned. We did our maneuvers. As you see, uh, we're, look like we're heading right for each other. I think things are going to get ugly pretty quick. And now we're going to do squadron phase. So what happens here is the movement, and let's take a look at the, the squadron cards, okay? Your movement is judged by this. So you have a movement of four. So you're thinking, okay, I can move on that. No. You flip this over, and it has zones. One, two, three three, four. Now, they also can fire first, but they only can fire in this zone. Only zone one. And they can use any color die. Okay? On the other side, for the bigger ships, if they're within this range, they can use any of the color die. So that means that the victory class would get three red and three blue. If the victory class was firing within this arc, they would get the three red and three blue. If they tried to go long range, they can only use the three red. So that's something to consider. But we're going to use this as a measuring stick. Okay. And pretty much it's 360 around. So there's really no, you don't have to measure from the front. You can do this, you can do that. As long as you're touching the base, fighters are 360 around. Now, each side moves two per per round. So, since the re the rebels go first, they get to move two of theirs, and then um, the empire gets to move theirs. They have a movement of three, so they're a little bit slower. If you look here, or if you look on. Luke Skywalker's, he has a movement of three, and a movement of three, but they have five shields where TIE Fighters only have three. So, we're going to move this four. I mean three, excuse me. <laughs> and we can move it over here, so it's fine, as long as it's within range. And when you're done, you click to the side to show that it's done. Okay, so we've already moved that, and then we're going to move these guys three, give the camera movement, and we're going to click that to the side. So now, we're going to go on to the other side here. See how much fun it is to play by yourself? Now, with these guys, you can move four. So we're going to want to get right at them. And we're going to move up right there, and then we click that over. I have this marked, so I know that that's that. But also on this base, if you really look, there she is. And you could flip it over, because on the other bases, you have that. So there you go. So, we are going to move this one as well. So they're going to be right next to each other, as you can see. I can't forget to click that. And then, it is then the Rebels' turn again. And they only move three, 
So we'll move that three. Actually, just move that over a little bit. And move him up to three. All right. And then since they have no more ships to move, okay, they get the full, um, um, the Empire gets to finish out all their move. Okay. So what we'll do is let me get everybody busy right in here. So I can do this pretty quickly. Slide that over. Slide that over. Slide that over, and then slide that over. As you can see, you don't have to be too precise because of the 360. So, as you can see, all the markers are red now, except for this one, which we'll fix, and this one I just forgot to do. So now what happens is we flip this marker over to the red side. That means that the next round, okay, since the round's all done, and we would redo our orders again, okay, that to activate something, it would have to be in the red zone. So it's kind of a nice little feature, so you don't have to go, okay, switch them all back to blue. No, you just turn that over, and then you know that anything that has not been activated is in red, and then um, is act activated in blue. And then you would just swap it over again and again. So... That's our first round. I hope that um, solves a lot of things as far as movement's concerned. Um, and the next round, we're going to do two rounds. I mean, the next uh, video, we're going to do two rounds, and we're going to start getting right into it. And you can tell that this closes pretty quick, and we're going to be doing some firing and some maneuvering. So I'm going to think this out. I'm going to come back and I'll have the dials. I'll show you how we reset that and how we put them into place and how we're going to have to kind of plan ahead. And if you guys got any ideas or want to make any suggestions, feel free. Um, while we're here, yes, I changed that to two. Okay, there we go. So that shows you that, that keeps you locked in and lets you know what speed we're at. So you can slow down too with navigation. So there you go. That's the first round. Uh, this is already 17 minutes, and what we'll do is uh, we'll see you tomorrow, and we'll do probably rounds two and three. Thanks for watching.